Hello and welcome to another volume of Classic Radio Bloopers. It's the battle for the town halls at seven minutes to ten o'clock. As I say, a lot of attention focused on Southampton tonight. Keeping an eye on, us, on that for us this evening, live from the Civic Centre, is Jane Hill. Can you hear us, Jane? Um, no, I can't. Oh, right. In that case, we'll have something a bit more dynamic. Details are coming in of an explosion in Minehead. Early so, what have we got for you on Volume 4? Good people, pray heed our petition. Your attention we beg and we crave. And if you are inclined for to listen, an abundance of fast time we'll have. Hello, I've come to tell you about The Folk Folk, a programme that you can hear at two minutes past eight this evening. Instead of our usual sort of thing, <laughs> we've got a group in. <laughs> With a few famous names, too. No expense spared. Celebrities here include Bath Easton based actress Jane Seymour. Jane who? Actress Jane Seymour. Oh, her. And what about him? You know. Richard Edmund, why, in fact, are you going? Could we start that again, do you think, with, with David? Yeah. <laughs> yes, surely. Yes. That's called not knowing whether you're coming or going. And now I'm very pleased to welcome back to the studio after an interval of a couple of weeks because we've been having those summer specials, Bernard Brooks from The Link. Good evening, mm -hmm. Bernard. Hello. Uh, hello. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Good evening, Richard. Nice to be back. <laughs> now, what have you been thinking about during the interval that uh, we've been... What have you been thinking about during the interval that we... What have you been thinking about recently? Well, <laughs> I can't share all my thoughts with you, Richard, obviously. Quite right, too. Especially in a studio with a live microphone. It's three minutes past three. <sighs> Thanks. Next year's on the hour at four o'clock. I've got a man sitting opposite me who's looking like a scared rabbit, but you're not really, are you? No, I'm just pissed. Ah, right. Nothing like total honesty on the radio, is there? Uh, um, as I say, uh, unfortunately, my wife died uh, this last, well, I buried her on Wednesday, and I'm now on my own, you see. I can listen to the radio a bit. Drowned the thing right out, did she? Still, you never know what's in the pipeline when you're listening to the wireless, no matter what they're talking about. What about knitting? Yeah, I do a bit of knitting. Do a bit of knitting? Have yes. you ever heard of knitting with four knitting needles? Yes, used to knit socks like that. My aunt used to knit her husband's sewer socks because he worked down the sewers. <laughs> sewer socks? Yes, big long white ones come right up to your thigh to go inside the sewer boot, you know. Did he mind too much about working in the sewer? It sounds a bit messy, doesn't it? Well, it does, but unfortunately he did pick up a disease from it and died. <laughs> Oh, dear. To corpse or not to corpse? And what to do with the corpse? The story about how Simon Fraser came to be buried here. Because he died. And just how dead was he? Pronounced critically dead. I somehow think that needs a bit of a qualification. A report from David Willey. The doctor at the hospital in Bologna told me that the former champion was now to be considered clinically dead. Ah, mustn't mess about with death on the radio, must we? Last night, a man phoned up the police in Dusseldorf and said, Come quickly, I've just been killed. I've just killed someone, sorry. Let's change the subject, shall we? How about a dedication? Someone's actually sent a letter in. Uh, incidentally, I'd just like to say that you're live on the radio. And what we do, you see, oh, every well, morning... Um, please, I don't want this, thank you. You don't want... Well, it's not for you, it's for your son. <laughs> Never mind, we'll get a dedication for, or is it by, a real pro? Dorothy Doig of Murdoch Terrace, Dunblin, housewife by day, businesswoman by night. And I've got that wrong, it should be the other way round. Not to worry, you'll be fine this time. For Mrs. Dorothy Doig of Murdoch Terrace, Dunblin, housewife by night and businesswoman by day. Have I got that right? No, but you're not having a third go. We've got much better things to do. I think. Right, we're playing the name game at uh, 24 minutes after 7 o'clock and we've got Leonard Buckingham on the telephone line. Hello, Leonard. Uh, good morning. A very good morning to you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Holzhaus in Port of Aspalica. Well, <laughs> I'm no wiser, really. <laughs> that, that is near Minden. OK, Leonard, we're playing the name game. Uh, do you want to hear it again? Uh, I uh, want to pass a message on to my son. A daughter-in-law. Um, hold on, Leonard. I thought we were playing the name game. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is for a request. Oh, dear me. Well, you've got through to the name game department. I'll yes, tell you what. This is the name game. As you're on, as you're on, give your, you know, message over the radio very quickly. Yes. Go on, then. Off you go. Uh, to Eric and Diane Buckingham. 
Eric works in the SKC in uh, Minden. Hello? I'm still here. Uh, Eric works at the SKC. And I am his father, and I wish to pass the message on to them, congratulating on them on their 10th anniversary, wedding anniversary, at uh, the okay. end of December. Right. OK, Leonard, we better leave it there. So, for presenting us with a granddaughter. Right. Leonard, we're coming out to the news now, and we'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Yes. Have a good day, won't you? And I'd like to hear Gilbert O'Sullivan. Hello? Hello? I'd like to hear Gilbert O'Sullivan uh, is uh, mat matrimony. All right, Leonard, we'll see what we can do for you. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye now, bye-bye. Leonard Buckingham, ringing from near Minden. And if you're on the radio, you've got to have your teeth in full working order. So, Martina gliding into the final, winning there 6-2, Miss, Navra Rat Miss, Miss Navratilova's opponent in the final will be the young Czech girl, Man Hannah Mandlikova. Having trouble with the teeth today. So, the final is, as I said, Martina Navratilova. Lo Mad, Mad... I'll get it right in a minute. Miss Nav... Martina Navratilova and Hannah Mandlikova. I'm definitely having trouble with the teeth. Could I have a new pair, please? I think the BBC teeth are out on loan at the moment, but one way round the problem of naming names is to leave it till the very last minute, or even later. Now, football and Oxford United's manager Bill Asprey is not expected to name his side to play Chesterfield until a few minutes after the kickoff. And these days, it's often quite difficult to find out who's playing who. Just one defeat in the last six. Watford now away to Watford. And with that all sorted, we can concentrate on who's at the top of the league and how it affects the fans. The FA Cup final result has forced colourful politician Pat Wall to shave off his beard. The militant supporter is an Everton fanatic and said unless they won the cup, he'd keep his distinctive bristles forever. Bristles forever. Nick Powell reports from Brexit. Mustn't knock the fans or the game, whatever it is. It's a brilliant game. I think men and women can play it alike. OK, so it may be not be laid like to fling yourselves around in the mud, but then again, you know, you can compare it to any sport, really. The referee was full of praise, but might have chosen his words more carefully. There's a lot of knockers for women's rugby. An Olympic clangor, if ever I heard one. In the women's pistol, Margaret Thomas finished 11th. And in rowing, Andy Holmes and Stephen Redgrave are through to the semi-finals of the Cockless, Coxless Pair. And after that, let's take a few bars rest with a bit of music. What'll it be? The Prelude and Liebestod from Tristan and Isolde by Wagner. I'll do that again on second thoughts. <laughs> Maybe something a wee bit more up-to-date might be better. Chilly Willy at Imperial College. Then Charlie and the Wide Balls, Wide Boys, <laughs> oh, whoops, are on at Dingwalls tonight. Inside information. <laughs> Let's settle for a less obscure group, one of the really big ones everyone's heard of, like Banana Rama or Duran Duran. We have a new entry at number 26 from Duran Duran. Oh, let's just have something from one of the big, well-known charts. Swing out sister and surrender. It's time now for this week's top ten selling Isle of Wight singles. I think we have a slight problem with our bit of music. Not to worry, it happens to the best of them. And so they stood last week at number three, Typical Man. Tina Turner, number two. I don't believe this is happening. It is, because this is bloopers, volume four, no less. And once again, the net proceeds are donated to Wireless for the Blind. Many thanks for your contribution. Now then, where were we? Or, more importantly, who are we? And at half past eight, we go to Battersea in London for any questions. The speakers this week are the Right Honourable Edward Ducan MP, Arthur Scargill, the Miners Leader, Lord Soper, and the journalist Anne Leslie. Any questions is at half past eight, and presented as usual... Uh, by, um, need I say. That'll teach you not to write it down. Though even that's not guaranteed safe either. It will now begin at 11.45, and today the play will last for one hour. It's a play by, uh, can't find it, uh, Pushkin, it's called The Snowstorm. Just in time. And that's only one of the multitude of pitfalls for broadcasters. They're never safe, not even if there's a pre-recorded tape being played in, because it just might not have been properly edited. That's the beauty of bloopers. The beauty of a single flower, a branch of a tree, or the vast embracing sky. 
help me to hear the love that lies in the ordinary words of friends and family. Help me to trust you. Lord, help me to be thankful that yesterday's problems have passed and help me to measure today, not by the difficulties I might meet, but by the good things the day will bring. Free me from fear. And I've blown it, really. I didn't get the last sentence in. Sorry. <coughs> it's a morning prayer from Frank Topping. Steady, Frank. It's five to nine. But that sort of thing's mere chicken feed compared to some of the things that can happen on live radio. Locally, drugs with a black market street value of thousands of pounds have been stolen from a doctor's surgery in Herefordshire. Lemster CID Chief Inspector Fred Skinner says the various morphine, opium and other drugs taken are probably now being sold on the streets to drug addicts. We hope that fire brigades and district council safety officers will be using it with parents' groups, with children's groups in the classrooms and indeed any interested community group who may be thinking of organising either a small um, private... Sorry, that seems to be the wrong report. Oh, I don't know. You never know what community groups fire brigades and district councillors get up to, not to mention children's groups. Right, well, I'm surrounded by people who are very angry about smoking. I suppose you could say they're fuming about fuming. There's parents, there's doctors, and there's children. What sort of reaction are you getting from the children here? I mean, none of them around us look like they're old enough to be smokers. Well, I don't know. I expect in that school quite a lot of you smoke, or you've tried it, haven't you? OK, no, well, let's have a straw poll, then. We've got six kids with us now. Which of you, be honest, there are no teachers listening, which of you has ever had a sly puff on a cigarette? Anyone? Um, Joe no. Bullock, he's in our class, he has. <laughs> yeah, Joe yeah, Bullock has, he yeah. smokes he has, a lot, um, yeah. He, yeah. I think he's had a bit of um, cannabis with, with a little bit of it. <laughs> no good standing there saying you can't say that on the radio. Everyone knows you're more likely to get the truth from children than anyone. And why would you like to strike it rich? Well, I would like to... Strike it rich for a new bed. Mm. For you or...? Me. I see. And why why do you need the new bed? Because my daddy is in the army. Uh, and on weekends, my Uncle Charlie makes me sleep in the kitchen. Anyway, he's not really my Uncle Charlie. And if that's how grown-ups carry on, Lord knows what young people get up to in school dorms. George Harrison. The time's just coming up to 20 to 7. A West Country headmistress claims that girls opting to take their A-levels at mixed-sex boarding schools are being made victims of sexual harassment. I think, really, it's taking advantage of girls. It's probably due to lack of people to fill the beds. Wonder what she meant to say. Oh, well, vive la différence, if you know what that is. Well, as you can imagine, they're very young at eight years of age in the beginning. And I think sometimes that at eight years of age, there isn't much difference, really, between the boy and girl. I think it's only a little bit later where the difference might occur, as you probably know. And I always thought you could tell from the moment they're born. That's if you're smart. Though, if some top people had their way with us, things might be a bit different. Prince Philip is telling Britain to smarten itself up a day after he castrates it castigated mankind in general for polluting the planet, the prince told the tidy Britain group that the nation was a dirty disgrace. Not surprising. The things young people get up to. Eight till late. Dancing to the five-pronged prick. And it's to raise funds for the Royal Naval Association. And I thought the Navy people did things on a much grander scale. The ship uh, weighed anchor and went off to the fleet and uh, got as much ammunition as could be found on board any of the ships. What were the balls like that were held on the ship's deck? The Royal Marine Band, in all their finery, sitting, playing underneath the 15-inch guns, made a very impressive scene. Must take you back, John, oh, hearing all these old tales. All those balls on the deck, <laughs> marvellous. Amazing. 22 and a half minutes past eight. Well, it's 101 days since Richard and Adrian Crane waved goodbye to the people of Darjeeling. in northeast india holding that one under control deserves an award like those new year's honors ones computer manufacturer clive sinclair is in the list 
Two of the best represented groups, however, are Defence Ministry officials who get a total of 24 honours and Tax and Customs officers who are awarded 19 officers between them. I wonder what they'll do with them. Parade them round all the local garden fates as a public relations exercise, maybe. Meeting the people. Each year I see younger people coming and parking their cars and having a picnic and enjoying it and sitting on the grass and talking to the old people. Whether or not they're related to them, they're saying, Hello, Grandma, how are you? Enjoying yourself, love? And they're talking to each other, which is... I presume what it's all about. Well, Mike and John, it's been a great pleasure to see you once again. What we're all doing now is sitting, listening to the Bristol Unicorn Band, who have finished just as I say that. <laughs> of course, if you do get a strong army presence, it can really intimidate a civilian interviewer. As you know, there is a, now a major peace offensive underway. Has this re been reflected in the fighting in South Vietnam? Has the enemy shown any evidence of... Uh, the answer is no. You get a different kind of problem with civilian radio. I had a word with Bernard, in fact, um, this week, and he would be pleased to accept at least another dozen invitations, i.e. for mothers and toddlers, the uh, disabled and handicapped, as you said, and the elderly. So any more WI groups who'd be willing yes, to help in this Kenshin way? Yes, it's Kenshin 4782. Madam, would you mind if waiting till <laughs> I've finished? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's another one for, uh, for, um, for, um... But once an interview's underway, it's normally no problem if it's in one of those soundproof studios. Is it only your house that's going to be used? No, we have used several houses in Cottom already, and we wish to extend this. Our friend, the other side... Just, just hang on a sec. I think we're going to have to let the thunder go over. The main thing for interviewers is to sit back and relax. They're interested in other things, aren't they? I mean, there's dressmaking and things like that. There's nothing like that for them up here. They just roam over. around the streets. Pardon? I'm going to fall over. Ow! Doing an interview on location requires a sensible choice of venue. Somewhere like a railway station may give good general atmosphere, but can have the occasional, though infrequent, problem. Have you been able to watch it on the television over the past few days? Yes. Yeah, What's been your reaction as you've watched? It's very emotional, isn't it? Is it, uh, is it going to be the same in Cardiff? Do you Even better, I would say, to be there. It's super. Because it's the sort of thing that probably only happened once in a lifetime. Isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. So, what sort of memory do you hope that you're actually going to, to bring out of it? Just that everyone will be like one family. One of the better bits of British Rail timing. But wherever an interview's done, it's the quality of the questions that matter most. They were a green colour. And I really was thrilled to bits, but I honestly don't know. I'm very confused. I don't know whether they were frogs or toads. What, uh, Rose, what was the... What were... Oh, God, I can't remember whether it was or were. Um, what were... The, I can't get it right. All I'm after is to know what kind of the, well, what was the texture of the skins. There we are, got it out. In a manner of speaking, though at least it wasn't a silly question. Were you at all expecting a bomb? No, not at all. It's also not a bad idea to know who you're talking to. I would like your statement as Lord Mayor of London on the... I'm not Lord Mayor of London. I think that's his lordship over there. Oh, mate, have you done any auctioneering before that? Oh, yes, yes, I am an auctioneer. Mm. Oh, Wow. Every now and then a reporter can find a fairly ordinary question rendered ludicrous by events beyond anyone's control. Already, the bulk of the building has been knocked out by the contractors leaving just the shell and the upper stories, but it'll still make quite a, a bang when it comes down. You better run behind the toilets, lads. Put behind them toilets there. When you're ready, right. Yeah, I think we got that bang beautifully. How did it go? 
what timing. Still, there are far worse kinds of bangs to worry about if you live near Sizewell. Does it worry you at all being so close to Sizewell? Well, it happened until you arrived. Can't quarrel with that. Though a more carefully phrased and considered question might well give us a better answer. Now, obviously, uh, Reverend, you don't like the idea of um, these prep schools being used as um, fashionable schools for middle-class parents, but... Um, you, do, do you really think that um, it, it, it matters whether or not they believe uh, the parents themselves in, in a Christian education as such? I mean, would you be happy if they particularly wanted and believed that the Christian um, or the, the, the Anglican, Anglican sort of education was right for their kids? Would you like to see the church schools remain in that case, as long as you were convinced of their sincerity, rather than of the fact that they were doing it simply because it was a middle-class fashionable thing to do? That's a very good question. I don't know. Some people are so wary of the media, they get a secretary to shield them. This means the broadcaster has to use the back door or the phone. Though once the two are actually talking on air, you'd expect the secretary to admit defeat. They're all captains when they get out there, but, um, in, you know... Hello? 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 Who's yes, there? I'm afraid I can't get a hold of him at the moment. He's uh, in a meeting. Oh, I've got him on the line, actually. Oh! As long as you won't play it as one of the funnies. <laughs> Some personalities try to cope with the media by going on the really offensive. Could it be said that you're muscling in on the publicity? that the show's I called? don't need publicity, my dear. I'm a very big, successful star. I think you're impertinent. <laughs> and how dare you be so... Don't switch it off, dear. I'm not. I'm used to talk... I am used to talking to amateurs. Well, you're not I talking am to amateurs. Well, now. I shall tell you now, my dear. I don't need quote. I am booked up for three years, and you only have to find out who wants to book me. I am going all. I'm an international star. In that I case, why are you so touchy about what I just asked you? I think because it was a you fair said, question. "Am I wanting publicity?" I don't I, need. I asked you if you were muscling in on publicity the, here. They why answered you, you. The audience answered you my dear not me they applauded your Why? your stupidity and your ignorance and your bad manners well i think you're being very rude and bad mannered to me not to you my dear i find you inarticulate and i'm saying nothing though you do need to be a bit of an expert if you want to beat the broadcasters at their own game there's only a few who can just a final couple of questions on your future do you ever uh, there's talk of you becoming a leading member of the nec what truth is there in that rumour? Hello? Mr. Ben? Um, you said three minutes and I gave you three minutes. Another way of giving nothing away is to give nothing away. And by the time the police had come, presumably this gunman had gone. Gone. Can you give me any idea how much money was taken from the safe? No. Would you care to make an estimate? No, I wouldn't. Was anything else other than money taken? No. What happens next, Mr. Hurst? It's in the hands of the police. Five questions in 15 seconds. Not bad going, that. Another way is to go on the attack yourself. That's risky unless you really know your stuff. Now, why, when you said that about President Reagan and Mrs. Thatcher, didn't you attack anything about what President Andropov is doing or saying as well? Well, you see, have you read Michael's speech in Moscow? Yes, I have. Have you? Well, yes. you, I don't. I don't believe you. I'm sorry. Well, what did you, you what haven't did, seen the full? You haven't let us know. Have you seen the full text? Honestly, Mr. Cogger, no, no, I'm sorry. You, may I ask you to tell us tell what me, you first said? Of all, tell me first of all. Have you seen the full text? Of the I have not seen any reference in that text to an attack on what President Andropov's troops are doing in Mr. Afghanistan Snow, have you seen or the full military text? government in Poland. Mr. Snow, have you seen the full text? Because every other broadcaster has told me that they haven't. Have you seen it, truthfully? C can you... Can you no, I'm asking you a question, can, then I'll answer your question. Have you seen the full text? I have not seen any reference. I didn't ask any you that. Reference. Have you seen the full text? I have not seen any reference. Have you seen the to, full text? But, but, but would you tell me, Mr. Scargill? Would you tell I'm me? Would you answer my question? Well, I'm have asking you, you the questions, if I may say oh, so. Well, not this time, you know. I'm asking you, have you seen the full text? I, to be quite honest, I have not seen the full text. Right. I wonder who you thought won that contest. But the opposite extreme can be equally fascinating by its unbelievable banality. Well, now, Mr. Crandall, you tell me about Tunbridge Wells. I don't know anything about it, only it's Tunbridge Wells. But you've lived here, I believe, since you were 18. That's right. And has it changed much in all that time? Yes, we've had a lot of changes. What's the, what's the biggest change, do you well, think? A lot of building and 
all I know about it, about Tunbridge Wells. I live it like a, a friend of mine, a great friend of mine, Tunbridge Wells, man who got plenty of money and I haven't got the very little. <laughs> he, you know, he's talking about the, no slums, he said, in Tunbridge Wells. I said, you take a walk on with me, I can show you some slums. I said, if you lived in Tunbridge Wells all your life, you don't know nothing about Tunbridge Wells, I said. All you know about where you live and your police of business, that's all you know. You don't know nothing about the poor people. You don't know anything about them at all. So what did he say to that? Well, he couldn't say any other because he didn't know. I said, you never know what it was to, to live in a slum. I said, in a house where there's four or five or six or more live in a six-room house. What's the nicest thing about Tunbridge Wells? What, what? What's the nicest thing about Tunbridge Wells? I don't know. Don't you know anything nice about it? No. Nothing at all? No, I know nothing about Tunbridge Wells. But it must be a healthy place. Hmm? It must be a healthy place. Oh, it's a healthy place because you can go back to the 15th and 16th century, can't you? Yes. And Perhaps you don't know that. Oh, yes, I knew that. But anyway, oh. it must be healthy for you to be looking so wonderful at this age. Well, why shouldn't I look wonderful? Well, um, that, of course, comes from the inner spirit, I know. Hmm? That comes from the inner spirit. In, in from, from your own spirit. Yes, it is. I don't know what you want me to say. If I can say anything to please you, I will, but... Oh, what you're saying delights me. Hmm? What you're saying delights me. I no, want you to tell me something about living in Tunbridge Wells. Well, I can't tell you. I lived in Tunbridge Wells. That's all I know about it. Perhaps a gentle slide into a new topic might lift the thing onto dizzy new heights. What about the mineral water? Oh, I don't think much of it. Do you Tum think? Tunbridge Wells water, it's... You drink a lot of it, you... What I mean to say, it'd be soon be iron, wouldn't you, if you keep drinking it? But don't you think it has a good effect on people? Pardon? Don't you think it has a good effect on people? No, I don't. You I think don't it's just I, imagination? I think it was well go and drink a, a, any other spring water as Tumbridge Wells. It's got a name. Every, there's a lot in a name, you know. See? You can bolster up something. You make people believe it if you publish it well. You think it's all advertisement? Hmm? You think it's all advertisement? You think it's all advertisement? That's it. That's it. And before we get a trifle fractious, let's do another bit of gentle steering with a style of question that's bound to get the answers we so dearly want. Tunbridge Wells mineral water, so we as well drink any other water. Uh, tell me, can you tell me anything about the pan tiles? Hmm? Can you tell me anything about the pan tiles? No, I don't know anything about the pan tiles. I know it's the pan tiles, that's all I know about it. Um, and uh, can you tell me anything about changes in transport here? I suppose once upon a time there were horses, where now there are motor cars. No, I can't tell you anything about that. You don't remember that? Well, I, just, I could remember, but I didn't have any business in it. That's the thing makes you remember, when you've got some money in it. Oh. We surely don't want to talk about something as vulgar as money. On the other hand, what can we talk about? Can you tell us about your birthday party at the coffee club? Ah. Next, first of January. Next January, 103. You'll be 103, yeah. the first of next January. Yes. And who's coming to the party? Who's coming to the party? I don't know. Well, you can come if you're good, subscribe a, a fiver, so as we could drink your health, so have some coffee. Oh, splendid. I'll yeah. accept the invitation. Yes. Well, we, you, you come in, that's it, and you can pay a... A bit, you know, and you can treat us all to a coffee. Well, that's, that's, that's an invitation. <laughs> so next, next 1st of January, you'll be 103. Yes. We should be able to supply with some coffee. I really think we'll have to call it a day now. How about one final zappy, hard-hitting closer? Mr. Crundle, would you just to finish off, tell us your full name and how old you are now? Hmm? Just to finish off, would you tell us your full name and how old you are now? True name, my name. Your full name? My full name. Alfred Cronwell. And how old are you? Born in 1851, 1st of January. 
You can work that out yourself, can't you? And I understand she went on to fame and fortune with her own chat show on the radio. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? That's uh, Harold the Frog from Harry Seacombe, which is just one of the many delicious tracks on the Captain Beaky album. Yes, Jeremy nice Lloyd, welcome yes. to Thank Home you. Run. I'm how, where and when was he born, your Captain Beaky? Uh, Captain Beaky um, was born ooh, about 20 years ago. Really? It oh, it, it's so absolutely perfectly the sort of stories, all the poems are the kind of stories, and the characters all got the kind of names that one's daddy used to tell one when one was a mini. And that's about it for this side. On side two, you'll find gardening, magazine presenters, news people, and many others taking the flack. Don't fail to miss it. Oh, and talking of modern radio, daytime presenters really do know how to hand over to each other as one program ends and the next one begins. Cheers for now. Well, it's tonight, Trevor Fry was doing the funky chicken to that one. I want oh, you to know that one. Did you like the movement? It was pretty good, that trap. Shocking, wasn't it? More like a rubber chicken. I thought about a fucking fun <laughs> funky chicken. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> Very close, wasn't it? I'll tell you what's on the programme yeah, today. Now, so starting quick. at 9 o'clock, we've got the golden years. We're looking at the 60s and the 70s. <laughs> Lots of memories for you. With the couple classics today from Roberta Flack and Rod Stewart and Linkline looking at the under five C player records. Trev, if Thank you're you. going to trip over one word in your <laughs> yeah, life, it must not be one. funky. <laughs> <do you? laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Welcome to the last three minutes of my broadcasting career. I'd like to say how much I've enjoyed working here on the radio. Hello. Well, a busy programme this morning, so let's greet our first guest of the morning, who's across the table with Judy. Couldn't we start again and be a trifle less, well, you know, like they do it on those very formal and correct stations? Radio 3, good morning to you on Sunday the 18th of September. Did you know that the Open University is not just for people who want to take a degree? There are a range of other programmes to choose from. There is a range of other programmes to choose from. Might be a better way of putting it. And talking of putting it, when you get in the car and switch on the radio, it sometimes takes quite a while to grasp what on earth they're talking about. I also don't much like doing it. Isn't it funny? Mm. Loser people, you, a lot of people really love doing it, don't they? I don't. I love it up. I love it when it's up, but I don't like doing it. Do you? No, I ain't got no... <laughs> don't look at me like that. I ain't got no artistic flair. No, I can see that. I, I can appreciate things, but I ain't got no t artistic flair. You don't like doing it? No, don't like doing it. No. No. Don't like, in fact, because I don't like doing it, I don't do it. I wonder have been doing it all a week. We haven't, have you? <laughs> Wore out Why are you his... laughing at? Nothing. he just been at it all the week and he got all his decorations up. You're laughing at me? He, he said, I'm, you've got to enjoy Christmas. Ah, Christmas, decorations, tinsel, holly and bing. But more than anything else, Crosby will perhaps be remembered for his song White Christmas, one of the biggest selling records of all time. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Still, we've always got Jack Jones. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. We mustn't care about the color of his hair or the length of his skin. Might be worth dedicating those lyrics to someone. Mrs. Regina Farrelly. Mrs. Regina Farrelly. That's right. Yes, there aren't many vaginas left. Re there aren't many Reginas left, are there? No. That's the trouble with live radio. It's impossible to forecast what's going to happen or what you're going to meet head-on when you're out and about. Who needs clothes? <laughs> Do you walk around like this every year here at Glastonbury? When I can get here. You can't feed a full frontal into that thing, can you? No, you can't. <laughs> it's probably an advantage. <laughs> she didn't tell us what she was wearing at the time, though the truth was revealed later. Dressed up as a bumblebee or a wasp. What were you, Masu? I was a wasp bee. A wasp bee. <laughs> tell us what you did. I had to whiz over two fences and bash a balloon with a little wand with a prick on the end of it and run back again. And that was, that was something you should have seen, Louis. But alas, he was too busy doing other things. In groups, too. England singers, incidentally, are rather similar to the King singers, the six men who do that sort of thing together. 
Um, oh, gosh. It's so important to say what you mean and mean what you say on the radio. There's always someone who'll take it the wrong way, though you sometimes can't blame them. I've also been on to Patrick Moore at Chelsea, and he said he'll be very much on the job tonight with his big telescope. What is notable is that it's the ninth day in a row that the FT index has been up at... Uh, three o'clock it had put on 30 points since the royal wedding i don't know whether that's got anything to do with it but um, some people are calling this the lady die rally because it has been up every single day since that wedding the united states army is known throughout the world for the care training and handling of its privates the bed's now being packed in a special container and monsieur david says prince charles intends to give it to his wife as soon as the royal baby is born. The ever-growing communication business at its lucid best. And now we have a very attractive young lady here at our microphones. What's your name? Mrs. Renee Robertson. And what are you doing in town? I'm on my honeymoon. Your honeymoon? Well, are you enjoying it? Oh, I'm enjoying every inch of it. <laughs> This is volume four of classic radio bloopers. And the more you spread the word about the tapes, the more money we raise for Wireless for the Blind. By the way, my warmest thanks to all the professional broadcasters who, by showing us the occasional chink in their armour, reveal that they, like all of us, are not quite perfect. Now then, where are we? In someone's garden, it seems. And as far as the, the route that uh, we're actually going to take, we've, we've started in all places in, in uh, someone's back garden, by the looks of it. Yeah. Yes, the footpath appears to go um, through someone's garden. There's some rather nice cabbages growing yeah. around here. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Sweet well, William, to It used um, to be very nice, but... Uh, down sorry, the could, bottom, I, could I interrupt you? Yeah. Uh, I'm just doing this, this for the BBC this afternoon, oh, you see, sorry, so... Sorry, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, I say, we're starting in someone's garden now. Well, they were his cabbages in his garden, but that's reporters for you. Coming at you from all directions, shoving phallic-looking things into your face, could upset some people. So what kind of magazine is Spirit? Um, it's a feminist magazine. Lots of different subjects that we think are of interest to women, and we try to cover them from a feminist perspective. Who do you sell to mostly in Britain? I can't bear you asking that right now. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to hold it there. I, mean, I do. I do yeah. it, it could sit on the table. Can it can't, no. Why not? Should I hold it? Should I? But whichever way you look at it, the inappropriate turn of phrase truly comes into its own when you're talking about air disasters and cannibalism. There are seven bodies in the snow. They can provide us with enough protein to survive for a month. As everyone knows, I suppose, 16 people live to tell the tale. Well, I've been talking about this film version of the adventure with the explorer and broadcaster Duncan Cass. What was his response? Well, I believe they've started off on the wrong foot. The ultimate case of foot in mouth, and a very strange story too. It might sound a little strange at the outset, but it's our job as people who inseminate large numbers of dairy cows to improve the quality of the beef balls, or to find the best beef balls, rather, that we can to use on the housewife. Could have been phrased better, but then you can forgive anything once. And what sort of work are you doing at the Milk Marketing Board in connection with this? Well, there are two distinct forms of work. First, we're trying to improve those balls. And we're also telling farmers what sort of shape those beef balls will be because shape is important for the housewife. And that's for the section that is pure bread. But for the other section, the one where the, de the farmer puts a beef ball on his cow, and we're trying to find the very best beef balls that we can of large number of breeds by progeny testing those balls. And here you see some of the examples of the use of those balls uh, on the housewife. Good heavens. Just one of the problems a housewife of the 80s has to cope with. Housewives even complained of tin foods changing price several times while they sat on the shelf. Uh, good a place as any, I suppose, if you want to make a complaint. But when the crunch comes, what goes out on air is down to the producer. He or she carries the can for any ambiguity, double entendre, or even questionable pronunciation. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, what ceremony is attached to the song we've just heard? Well, this is two young men who are singing folk songs and singing about their song balls while they're trying to perhaps interest some of the young girls who they might like to marry later. Talking about children, uh, there was one little boy 
whom you met and whom you found very attractive for one reason or another? Well, I was visiting a cattle camp nearby the cattle camp I was living, and I was amazed to see this little boy called Ajuang Makwech singing about his father's balls. And uh, he was just a tiny little thing, and he was leading round um, a white calf because he couldn't lead his father's balls, which he was singing about. The balls were called um, Ma, ma Pere and Ma Bore. Name them, do they, in that part of the world? But then we put a lot of store on names, too. Lady Hater, you're having this... Gator. Gator. God, I beg your pardon. She's a Lady Hater, but she's... Yes, indeed. Just... Yes. <laughs> well, she keeps bursting the boys' balls, and they get a bit cross with her, really. Spec they do. It does seem a high price to pay. Never mind. Get on with it. I see you've got uh, rhododendrons as we walk, walk along here. Yes. Uh, I would have thought the soil was rather acid around here for rhododendrons. It's the other way around. Is it? Oops. Oh, yes, sorry. It's rather alkaline. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll start that again. No, you're not able to have a second go if you're live on air. How difficult do you think it is to be an English wine grower? It's not difficult to be an English vine grower. Especially if everything's properly labelled. An answer to what might well be called the plant label syndrome. The squint and crick in the neck that you get from peeing at practically illegible labels in the greenhouse or garden. Or even the hothouse, as some call it. But the foundations of a salad were not cheap. Lettuce caught on the hop between hout hout who, who <laughs> Lettuce caught on the hop between hout horse. Lettuce caught on the hop between hout hoose. Right. Take a deep breath and go for it. Lettuce caught on the hop between hot house and... <laughs> <laughs> They're not helping you, your colleagues. Try to ignore them and have a brief run-through of what you've got to say. Lettuce caught on the hop between hot house and outdoor <laughs> seasons. Great. Now, go back a bit and take a run at it and you'll be right as rain. But the foundations of salad were not cheap. Lettuce... Oh, no! <laughs> oh, yes... Lettuce caught on the hop between hothouse and outdoor seasons retail at around eightpence. Well done. Never thought you'd do it. And with colleagues like that setting you off, who needs friends? Howard Dill of Windsor, Nova Scotia, grew a pumpkin weighing 493 and a half pounds in 1981, which I think is the biggest pumpkin the world has ever seen so far. And is he out of hospital yet? I don't know. <laughs> And once the seed of a joke begins to germinate, it can grow out of all proportion. How is the supreme champion judged <laughs> to be such? <laughs> well, firstly on weight, but also on the on the bloom of the skin. The skin needs to, to have a certain <laughs> glow to it. It needs to be glowing with a, with a nice sort of orangey-yellow colour. Now, one mm. person referred to a ton of manure, mm. but there must be more than that. Well, there is. I think the manure, actually, should be uh, five or six years old. That's what I'd heard. Not just ordinary. <laughs> Look, I <don't... laughs> Meanwhile, a small line of people wait to get into the studio to record their bits and pieces. If it's possible. Um, to have manure, properly matured manure, and this uh, being an element to ours producing the perfect <laughs> pumpkin. <laughs> oh, God. No, don't do that. <laughs> I don't know what it is about vegetables, but they seem to cause broadcasters more problems than animals and children, even the common spud. So go along to the merchant now and buy your seed potatoes. And the next thing is, you're going to bring them home and sprout them. This is known as chitting potatoes. Uh, but it has been proved, um, scientifically this is, uh, that potatoes that have been chitted will produce much heavier crops. If you're wondering why I'm smiling, I'm just thinking of piling a whole load of potatoes in our spare bedroom. I think my wife's going to be very pleased with that. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Personally, I take most of what I hear on the airwaves with a large dose. 
of salts. Laxatives, for example, of course, covers a wide range of things. We're not just talking about a tablet if you feel a bit constipated, but, you know, it is the bottom end. I've had a lot of letters from laxatives <laughs> at the bottom end. That's got to be the ultimate, hasn't it? This is volume four of the blooper tapes. Classic moments from the broadcast airwaves with one or two outtakes thrown in when the real professionals reveal their human side, just for a split second or two. But uh, that a man is likely to appear in uh, court in Stroud a bit later today and the charge is likely to be something like trespassing with uh, uh, an arm of some sort. He needs a wee bit of a hand there. A firearm? Typed scripts are usually better than handwritten ones. You are listening to Events West and now Film News with Brian... Brian Emus? What is it? Lem... Lemis. Lemis. Lewis? with Brian. Names can give presenters a problem. I have with me John Hogg here, the score of the first high. John, that was very much uh, almost a, a copy of the try that you scored the first try indeed in the semi-final of the cup match against Mosley. Well, it wasn't an exact copy, yeah, uh, Dave, because I was John Carr at the time, not John Hogg. <laughs> but never mind. Well, can't win them all. The truth is, they're unhappy about pain, although this is index-linked and so is relatively high in relation to others in comparable jobs. And they're not happy, too, about the numbers of coppers on the job. Now, as far as pay is concerned, they may be index-linked, but there's a nasty suspicion around at the moment that this is making the policeman on the beat too well peed, that, in fact, the copper is becoming a too sort well of... Too well peed? <laughs> <laughs> there's one for Jonathan here. Yeah. Coppers on the job and too well peed... And talking of on the job, it's an exhausting life being a broadcaster, frantically rushing to get everything and everyone together as the clock ticks inexorably on towards another news bulletin. It's usually not a bad idea to get to the little on-air news booth at least 30 seconds before the main studio technician opens the mic. After all, there could be someone already in there busily recording something for another programme. Radio Bristol News. For Hollywood later this year, there are sure to be a lot of applicants for her job. Hi, you're in a big rush. It's between the four thirty eight months, oh my god. Radio Bristol News, this is... On the other hand, if you get to the on-air studio too early, there's always the danger you might nod off waiting for your turn to speak to the world. Pero han ido también a Europa Occidental. Siempre han buscado la ayuda del Este y del Oeste en sus esfuerzos por reconstruir el país desde la revolución de 1979. Han manifestado en repetidas ocasiones a Estados Unidos que desean buenas relaciones y saben que la ayuda económica de Washington contribuiría mucho al restablecimiento de su propia economía. En su posición de que Nicaragua es un subordinado de la Unión Soviética y Cuba para exportar la revolución a sus vecinos, el gobierno del señor Reagan dice que miles de toneladas de armas soviéticas han inundado a Nicaragua. Pero ¿hasta dónde ha llegado la influencia de esos asesores? Entre aquellos que estuvieron como observadores en Nicaragua en 1979, no cabe la menor duda de que fue una revolución esencialmente doméstica contra el régimen de Somoza, que no estuvo inspirada principalmente por el dogma marxista. <laughs> A well-organized news person always checks things like scripts for typing errors and such like, but beforehand. To belt up or not to belt up, that's the question we'll be trying to answer on 388 reports this week. Remember, from the first of next month, you're breaking the car if you don't wear your seatbelt. The car was discovered after a nationwide alert just outside Wookie Hole. It was parked at another campsite where one of the people being held under the Prevention of Tourism Act was picked up. And 36 people have died in Norway when their plane smashed into a cliff and burst into claims. An entire guards battalion of 550 men is still confined to barracks in London this morning after a young recruit was beaten up. About 100 of the men have been singled out for tougher disciplinary action and several have been seen scrubbing the and um, uh, sorry scrubbing um, 
on a, parade, on a parade ground inside the barracks. Some broadcasters prefer to pre-record as much as possible, so it's all perfect and ready to be played in just when it's needed. Well, now cycling, and in the 1984 season gets underway today with the traditional opening event, the first in a series of three Wallace Hill Volvo's pursuit races around Kilmarnock. One of the organisers, Dave Miller, told Colin Calder about the race. <laughs> Well, we seem to have a small problem with the tape. Hopefully we've got the gremlins sorted out of the machine and we can go to that report. <laughs> no, we're going to have one of those days... And that's just fine by me. But whether a story is live or on tape, it's got to be accurate. And that means getting the facts right. And that means checking them out before going on air. We are, of course, down here just seeing Rolls-Royce about to be privatised. What do you see happening about the possible privatisation of British aerospace? Well, we are privatised. And now here's Mr. Oleg. First name, Mike. The competition was organised by cartoonist Rosalie Cox, better known as TV Scribble. With a look at today's sport, my colleague. Still, lapses of memory can happen at any time, day or night. And I'll tell you something else. Lapses of memory can happen at any time. Tomorrow is Remembrance Day, and uh, young and old standing alongside the route, sporting the... Uh, um, the, the, uh, the uh, what is it, the, the um, lily to uh, denote the um, Remembrance Day. So that's what it's like here in Fleet Street at the moment, as the Gritters, I wasn't a lily, it's a poppy, silly me. And at the one-year course we run in broadcast journalism at Bristol Polytechnic, the student reporters are trained to ask the right kind of questions, ones that lead to comprehensive, in-depth answers every time. What sort of a reaction are you hoping to get from the audience at the end? Do they go home and think about what you've, you've said? Are you trying to get across some message to them? Or do they just appreciate the show as it is? Yes. Say no more. But there's an art to phrasing a question, so it's really appropriate. Police in Bristol are investigating the discovery of a badly burned body in a water tank near the old Shortwood brickworks at Puckle Church. A Home Office pathologist was called to the scene following the grisly discovery at about three o'clock yesterday afternoon. Joining us now live on the line is Inspector Pete Bichevel. Peter, is there anything suspicious about this discovery? A masterpiece in interrogation, and a lot better than the kind of radio they used to have in the old days, by all accounts. Sixty-five years ago, this very weekend, radio listeners in the United Kingdom had to fork out ten bob for the first radio licence. Was it worth it, we ask, when this is the sort of thing they had to listen to? Ah! Total silence. Just the way it should be, if you ask me. And if there's one golden rule for broadcasters of all shapes, sizes, creeds, colours and political hues, it's always assume every mic is always live. Right? Right. Well, the time now is 11 minutes to 11, and that means it's time to go back to the town hall and wacko Dave Freeman. <laughs> Dave. Hello, Henry. Yes, because... Um, Tom... Yeah. Pardon? The lady over there who brought the subject up, wouldn't it be rather nice if, in a conversation to me, she would say, but, I've heard, and you could dress it up like that? Uh, we could do that if we weren't on live now. <laughs> MPs never set things up. <laughs> I wonder if someone's recorded that. Inevitably. And microphones sometimes stay live for a wee bit after an interview. Put you on the spot. In a word, before Christmas, do you think the nurses will or will not have their pay rise? Oh, I think they will. I think the government are determined to push this through. Neil Dixon, thank you. It's the most boring argument. And the time is now 16 minutes past eight. Let's take a breather to calm things down a bit. Let's listen. The, the title was, Have You Got a Borrow I Can Borrow? your name on the palm of my hand on the walls of the hall the roof of the house right across the land so
Well, you can guess what happened, can't you? A swift jog of the elbow, a quick fly of the stylus across the grooves, and a landing in an unfortunate point. Right into the blooper archives. I don't know if you've got the other volumes in this series, but in volume one, which is still available, there was a reporter trying to do a descriptive piece on a roller coaster without much success. Thankfully for him, it wasn't live, because not many words came out. But in response to that, I recently received an example of what happens if you do try to do it live with a radio mic. Well, here we go on the roller coaster. Never been on anything like this in my life before. And here we are. We're going up at the most incredible angle. <laughs> Seems a bit slow at the moment, but you never know what's going to happen next. And here we go down the side. Ah! Yeah, we're going down at the most amazing angle of the <laughs> Just the only thing to hang on to. This bar here and the G-forces are quite incredible as we go around the bend. And you ride! Ah, it's amazing! Big, big head hanging on for all he's worth. And now I slow down a bit we're recovering. And there's an overhang here. We're going to go up to this. Yes! Just about maybe. <laughs> I just can't believe this is the most amazing sensation! And now we're going round in a tight curve! Oh! It is, looks as though we're going to be thrown out, but somehow we managed to stay in the machine. It's quite unbelievable! What about getting this? Has anyone got a bag? Need a bag! Desperately need a bag! Oh! Here we're coming to the station. It's the most amazing experience I've ever had. Oh! Oh, back to you, Richard. I need a, I need a, I need a beer. And a medal. And after that, we'll take it easy with a nice, simple quiz. Right, off we go at the quiz. We play it this way. It is two points for a correct answer and one for a bonus if the correct answer is not got correctly. Got that, have we? Nothing like a simple set of rules to follow, because some of us grew up on very basic radio. Firstly fell back on top of secondly, secondly fell up on top of... <laughs> oh, God! No, I don't think God should be involved. Take it from thirdly. Thirdly fell back on top of fourthly, fourthly fell back on top of fifthly, fifthly fell dot back... <laughs> Keep going. Go on. Fifthly fell back on top of sixthly, sixthly fell up on top. These days, children's programmes are much more sophisticated and grown up, and with radio pantomimes, there's virtually no age limit. After a little chat, order was restored. The dog barked quietly. Woof, woof. There's a lot of them in here today, too. <clears throat> the man's wife went back to bed and uh, snored loudly. <sighs> And finally, the drunk. Um, pissed. <laughs> it's all right. We can edit it. Oh, it's live! Gosh, what a giveaway! Wonder who was playing the lead. Christmas pantomime will be Aladdin, and Les Dawson will be playing Widow Twanky. He told me about the role and why the male lead is always played by a woman. No, this wrong. Only... But back to the gritty business of journalism, where the truth will out eventually. So how safe is it then? I mean, what to height can a child fall onto it from without injuring itself? Well, we prefer to uh, express the safety in terms of a safety factor, and we uh, say that the material will allow children to fall by about seven to ten times from greater heights than they would under previous circumstances. So it is seven times safer than uh, concrete. What we're going to do here is to drop an egg on the surface and uh, the idea is to demonstrate the safety of the surface because in some ways the structure of the egg approaches the uh, nature of a child's skull and uh, the brain incorporated within it. Should we go ahead? So you're going to drop it from what height? Around uh, a metre. OK, well, I'll stand, stand well back. Standing well back, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and it broke. <laughs> and we'll try number two over the far side. I think we'd better scrub that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't work very well either, that, that egg broke. Why is that, do you think? I think the egg is, eggs are rather old. 
Uh, we'll try another one. Try it from lower down. We'll be running out of children's skulls soon. Yes, we'll have to get some more eggs. <laughs> well, let's clear up the broken eggs first before we try it again. This looks a good strong egg. Uh, we'll drop this one and see if we have better uh, results. Here we go. <laughs> well, that wasn't very good either, was it? Um, perhaps you should try dropping it from a slightly lower height. Awful waste of eggs, isn't it? Now, you've got a, a, a fresh egg this time, have you? We have uh, a fresh egg, and we'll drop it from around a metre, and, uh, fingers crossed, uh, we'll have a complete egg after the test. Here we go. <laughs> oh, well, that's, the, that's another one that hasn't, uh, hasn't worked. Nothing like using the radio as a marketing tool. Still, if at first, second, third, fourth, you don't succeed... Are you sure the sample is is the right um, the right thickness? Let's try again. I think the yolk's on there. What are you going to try now? Uh, fresh eggs. And uh, what we're going to do is to drop the egg from a height of around a metre and uh, hopefully you'll observe the bounce and we'll end up with a complete egg. Here we go. Okay. And talking of egg on face, you shouldn't always believe what's read into a microphone, even if you're reading your own script. The government's plan to sell off the electricity industry has been endorsed in the Commons at the end of a six-hour debate. The government gained a majority of 808, of 108. And American politics can get just as confusing, too. Michael Dukakis has clinched his position as Democratic candidate for this autumn's American presidential election. By a margin of two to one, he beat his nearest rival, Michael Jackson, in the remaining primaries. Inclu I think that should be Jesse Jackson, I do apologise. And that's about it. I'll take my leave of you with a wee off-cut from the making of Volume 3. Bye. If you want to know when Volume 4 comes out, drop me a stamped at self <laughs> If you want to know when Volume 4 comes out, drop me a stamped self... <laughs>